uh, statistician general, um, we, we are happy to be at this wedding to collect our pride. Um, as you say, having paid the lobola, I'm going to, because I think we need to explain a little bit what we're trying to do. In, in 2014, we, we made the statement that modernization is going to be one of our five top priorities during the, this term of office of the fifth administration. It's not that we were introducing it, because it had been introduced, light capture process had been launched, smart ID card was already a year running, the new passport was, all, was also in the offing. But it meant we are looking at modernizing the department using the most modern innovative technology and management approaches to fulfill our mandate. It means taking inconvenience away from the clients. It's a fundamental philosophy. Take the inconvenience away from the client. Make it ours. Let the person who comes to our offices standing there on the queue in front of a, an official, let that person feel no pain. Because we, the department, would have dealt with everything that was supposed to deal with for this client to experience a professional, convenient, efficient, and pleasurable service. Because at the end of the day, what we don't want is for people to walk out of our offices saying, wow, home affairs, you've got amazing offices, a beautiful office here of home affairs. As I walked in, the voice, whatever, greeted me, blah, blah, blah. That's not what we want. What we want is for people to take away excellent service. The office itself may not be the best, but the service must be memorable. We must never forget it. Because that is what should speak on behalf of government when South Africans think of our frontline services. This modernization means Moving away from being a paper-based department with all the accompanying inefficiencies, slow processes, security risks, and opportunities of corruption to a digital department which is efficient, secure, and fast, where people's information is available at a click of a button, as the SG was saying. The modernization program is central to the massive project we, are under, we have undertaken and that we will soon accomplish of reimagining the Department of Home Affairs as a modern, digital, secure custodian of national identity responding to the present and future needs and circumstances and run by professionals operating in a highly secure environment to protect the precious records of the lives of our people. As we said during our budget vote for this financial year, this re-imagination of home affairs means we must not only modernize the department, but we must repackage and position it firmly as a pivotal pillar for the pursuit of the critical objectives of our government and a reliable partner for ordinary people, government departments, and the private sector in pursuit of these goals that are so central to our dreams as a nation. Home affairs is just the backbone 
everything starts moving when home affairs makes it to move. And I'm going to explain it a little bit. But this extensive view of home affairs will enable critical partners in the public and private sector to identify their needs and partner with us to fulfill them in the national interest. Ladies and gentlemen, South Africans have seen a glimpse of this modern digital future and experienced its benefits when applying for smart ID cards and passports in our modernized offices and through e-home affairs. And for those of you who don't know what is e-home affairs, because quite surprisingly, the people you expect to be the most informed are also amongst the most uninformed. E-home affairs is when you go to the home affairs, onto the home affairs website, you find a little app at the corner written e-home affairs. You click it and you start applying for your ID card or your passport online and you complete the process at your bank. And some of our offices have moved ahead of us and have started offering this service. So you find somebody in Gauteng who says, especially in Joburg and Twan, who, say, who says, Minister, I went to your office. There was a long queue. The systems were down. And you say to them, did you try e-home affairs? You actually wouldn't even have had to go to the office. And they say, I didn't know I could do that. You say, but uh, we've been announcing this and re-announcing it and re-announcing it. And FNB has even been sending SMSs to their clients to tell them that there is such a service. How could you not know? But, but, but such are people. You, you tell them something, and that's why you don't find a priest in church saying to you, OK, guys, like I told you last Sunday, there will be no service today because Last Sunday, there was service, and I told you, if you do bad, you're going to hell. If you do right, you're going to heaven. You don't find them saying that. Because people need to be reminded of what they know again and again and again. But Coca-Cola does the same. They don't say that, ah, we dominate the market share, we compete with water. They will continue advertising, coming up with new adverts, reaching out to new clientele. Because people do need to be reminded. That is what e-home affairs is. But I'm not here to talk about it. South Africans were used to waiting months for these documents only a few years ago, but now they only get them in a few days. For those of you who've got smart ID cards, you'll remember the time when you had to wait. You were told, as soon as you applied for your green barcode ID document, they said to you, come back in three months. And you come back after three months, they say, it's not here, come back again. But now, you no longer have to come back to check for a document. You are not sure whether it's there or not. You get an SMS within a day or two or three or four saying your ID card is ready, come collect it. So at one stage we asked a question with Nkiza, but why these three months? Where does these three months come from? Does it come from the law? They said no. Where does it come from? They said no, it's just an arbitrary number. We said can we track the steps we take to produce the green ID document and why it has to be three months. We found out that it actually has to take 54 days. Some other people, it did take 54 months. There, there were people for whom their IDs, uh, their ID applications took three years or more. But these 54 days were really irrational. You now find somebody far away in Fryhead who says to you, oh, minister, I applied for my ID card yesterday and I got an SMS today saying I must come collect it, and it's here. And you see the happiness on that person's face. 
And some people who say to me, Minister, I'm going on holiday next week or in two weeks' time. My passport is full. Can you help me to speed the process up? And I say to them, you don't need to. Just go apply for your passport. You'll get it before the end of the week. And they send another message saying, oh, yeah, thank you. I, I got it. This is what we want. So just as life, the life capture system has revolutionized the process of applying for vital documents, the digitization of birth records will revolutionize the national identity system. It's an amazing project. It, it will enable you, at a click of a button, to get the documents you want, but it will also enable us to know your full story. Your father, your mother, your father's mother, your mother's grandfather, your siblings, and all. And you can imagine the, the pain people go through today when they go to give evidence, to vouch for their sisters or their brother's kids, their nephews and nieces, or for their grandkids. Because that information isn't readily available. In a few years' time, that information is going to be readily available. We will know everything there is to know about you. And enable you to navigate the system and apply for all any document you seek. For those people who seek full birth certificates, full marriage certificates, those who seek the death certificates of their grandparents or the marriage certificates of their grandmother, all of that information, when this project is completed, will be available, connected to the dot. So this project, in partnership with State SA, is of enormous importance to the country. In the years to come, we will all admit that the commencement of this project was a revolution in the public service. It was a revolution in the national identity system management. It's going to change the lives of our people in ways, perhaps at the present moment, we do not even imagine. But that's the beauty of revolutionary projects of this nature. You make people in the future who come across this system when it's fully functional think that this thing was always here. They don't know, even the ones who knew the pain of the times when the system was not there, forget that moment and start taking the new system for granted as if it was always there. But we are starting on a journey of enormous significance. For us at Home Affairs, who have 286 million records in our custody, 90% of which are in paper format. For us, you don't know how happy we are. We are happy as if all these records have already been digitized, and we really only have 10 million rent to do 11.6 million digitized uh, uh, conversions in two years. We're hoping that with the success of this project, and I'm not pleading for more money, but we hope that we will get more money to digitize all the 286 million records, all of which, most of which you saw. There are four sites in this country where people's paper records are kept. I shudder to think what if a tragedy happened. And I'm certainly not inviting it. With doom, I'm chasing the bad spirits away. <laughs> <laughs> These 286 million records go back to 1928. 
I was asking Mr. Mkize here if I can find the records of my grandfather. In actual fact, many of us would be pleased to know what we will find when this process is completed. Most of these records are of birth, marriage, death, ID application, naturalization, and permitting. In actual fact, they date back to 1800. They date back not to 1928. 1928 is the office where we were this morning. But all the records that we have go back to the 1800s. Not only does public administration depend on these records, but they have immense historical value for both country and citizens. They include, for example, 110 million birth records, which carry records of generations and can be used to construct family trees and in future significantly to simplify applications for various services and documents. Having primarily paper records has become a huge challenge. You know, we could use that space. But of course, the documents have to be cared for record purposes. The originals must be kept. In case anything happens, doom didn't work, the bad spirits came anyway, at least the, the, those records must be saved digitally. But nonetheless, for, for heritage, for legacy purposes, it's good to keep those records, to see the original marriage certificate of Mr. Nelson Mandela, of Mr. Walter Sisulu, and, and, and others. But the space for housing these documents is scarce and expensive. The time required for staff physically to locate and access individual records for lead, for, for mean, for lead times, it, 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 they mean taking, lo they take long for us to be able to do this when people have applied for documents. For example, such as amendments, as well as reprints of older birth and marriage certificates. You can imagine when you've applied for these documents and they have to go to that record, even though we, 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 we maintain a good filing system, digital filing system, but they have to go through, and that's why people at times don't understand when their application for an unabridged birth certificate take, takes long. We have to go through these documents manually, retrieve whatever information we need for us to be able finally to produce the document we are applying for. Paper records, ladies and gentlemen, are vulnerable to loss, to deterioration and fire, despite the care with which we store them. And therefore, digitizing these records means we will have to access records quickly and more efficiently and reliably. Transactions which took weeks will be completed for clients on the spot. And an example of this is the full birth, marriage, and death certificate. I think as we have announced before, our intention is to stop producing abridged and unabridged birth certificates and to produce a single document called a full birth certificate. And similarly, it's become clear to us as you go to our offices and you interact with clients that a lot of them are applying for unabridged marriage certificates. And so with regards to that program too, we have issued a directive that the, the abridged marriage certificate should in the near future be done away with so that we give our clients a full marriage certificate at once. Beginning in 2014, we started pre-modifying birth records of children with passports to make it easy for parents to comply with immigration regulations for traveling children. Millions of parents are now able to have birth certificates printed on the spot in most cases. 
Digital records will enable more efficient business processes. They will be easier and likely cheaper to store. They provide for increased security and auditability of documents. And some of the key outcomes of this project are, of this project are 5.8 million birth records will be digitized per year. As I said, we have 10 million red. We will do this over a period of two years whilst requesting for more money to do more. So over the next two years, 11.6 million documents are going to be digitized. They will be indexed by ID number for easy retrieval. They will have immediate access to a digitized, there will be immediate access to a digitized document irrespective of office location. And electronic records can be viewed or accessed by more than one person simultaneously which eliminates rely the reliance on individuals for knowledge as the document is accessible by multiple staff. The project is another step in the long-term process of digitization which will allow us to fulfill our mandate. A modern digital, digital home affairs makes four critical contributions to the nation. And this is the home affairs, a reimagined home affairs that I was referring to. First, it enables economic development in several important ways. The NTP envisions an industrialized and knowledge economy with a high level of economic participation. Our efficient issuing of identity documents and numbers enables citizens to work and conduct business. Each one of the documents we issue to citizens and foreign nationals alike, enable all sorts of financial and economic transactions and contribute to reducing fraud and corruption that could otherwise result in losses to the economy amounting to billions of rent. To open a bank account, to start school, to write exams, metric, to be accepted at varsity, to get social services, to get a social grant, to travel abroad to invest or as a tourist, to come to South Africa as a tourist, a critical skills person, a person, an academic, a business person. For all of that to happen, for that trade and commercial activity to start, for you to get a job, you need the documents that the Department of Home Affairs has to issue. Without them, there will be no possibility of knowing that the people employed are who they claim to be. And 3.8 billion rand, which is currently being saved because of access by the financial and security services, the, the, the insurance industry, by their access to the national population register, that 3.8 billion rand would be lost through people who are applying for fraud, who are making fraudulent claims for insurance. So Home Affairs enables, facilitates economic activity. Because for a long time, we've been thought of as a moribund department whose only job is to issue documents. And that reflects on the professionalism of our officials. You imagine yourself standing in a queue and there's an official who keeps saying, next, next. The, 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 the attitude of mind and the lack of professionalism at that moment both reinforces and is reinforced at the same time by this conception of a home affairs as a department that merely issues documents and does nothing else. The fact that our financial services institutions trust our national identity documents, the smart ID cards in particular, is a key factor in their ability to offer sophisticated transactions remotely and online in contrast to many other developing countries. Our online fingerprint verification partnership with banks and insurers through Subric has been successful in combating fraud and identity theft. The industry recently estimated, as I said, that this system prevents the loss of 322 million rand per month, 
which amounts to 3.8 billion rand annually. But secondly, home affairs contributes to national security. Through the national identity system, we are able, and, and effective immigration management, we are able to positively identify people and, re, and refuse entry into our country to those people whom we do not need here. Those who are regarded as a risk to the Republic. And for that reason, Cabinet decided in March fully to integrate Home Affairs into the security cluster. Thirdly, Home Affairs enables the capable state as envisioned in the NDP. As I have said, work starts when Home Affairs has started doing its work. The NTP envisions a capable and developmental state which provides the institutions and infrastructure necessary for the economy and society to operate. To provide effective governance and administration, this capable state must plan proactively and make intelligent use of technology. The NTP stresses the need for government to have accurate demographic data. Data. I know others do want data, but we don't <laughs> offer that. Excellent civil registration underpinned by universal early birth registration is a critical tool for government to have accurate real-time data on the total number of citizens and their age profile. This is of enormous importance to government planning, particularly in areas such as basic education, higher education and training, health and labor. Because if Home Affairs were, were able to register at birth or within the first 30 days, as the law says, every single child born in our country, we would be able to provide this information to States SA for final auditing and approval. From there, you say to basic education, so many children were reliably born this year. When I say reliably, I, I mean in terms of data, <laughs> figures. So they can already start thinking future-wise. In two years' time, these children will start early childhood development. Will we have enough institutions? In seven years' time, they start grade one. Will we have enough Grade one. In six years' time, they start grade R. Will we have enough classes, enough teachers, enough desks, enough support for these kids? At this moment, these kids will be doing grade 12. Will they have enough schools? And they will, and, and approximately and so many of them may, may graduate. Will we have enough universities? Need we build more? Do we need more desks? Will we have enough money to support them? And all of that. That, that is proper planning. That is proper planning that starts from the moment a citizen is born and reliable data is provided. And all legs of government start planning so that we ensure that our state is capable, efficient, and functioning well. We would like to see the smart ID card and eventually also your fingerprint becoming the universal passport for interacting with other government departments. Because e-government, e-governance, for which the Smart ID Card is an important enabler and platform, enables simpler and more convenient interaction between citizens and government. As I was saying earlier, we want to take the pain away from the client, the inconvenience away from the client, and place it on ourselves. And if we have properly functioning systems, data that's reliable, that's digitized. For example, I want to make bold to say you may not need in the next five to ten years to carry a plastic paper called the driver's license. 
Because besides the fact that everything on the driver's license, you derive it from the smart ID card, and therefore the only thing you must add on the smart ID card is whether this person can drive or not. But we produce another plastic paper called the driver's license. But then, but the driver's license itself doesn't drive, does it? I do. And why do I have to carry this thing? As soon as I pass my driving test and the traffic officer says, you can now drive, you have a license, and they load that information on the system. If government gave traffic officers fingerprints readers so that when I'm stopped at a, by traffic officers, all I have to do is not to try to reach out for my purse, pull out a plastic paper called the driver's license. I have to place my fingerprint on a fingerprint reader and my entire driving information comes up, including how many tickets I owe, how many warrants of arrest I have. But that's a government that now functions effectively, which now doesn't want somebody to go queue at the licensing department for half a day or the whole day and do many other things in order to jump the queue. And when you have jumped the queue, you then realize, shut, I forgot four passport photographs. <laughs> and you must go pay 40 rand or 80. For passport photographs, you do not need. Because your photograph is already on the national identity system. But once we create a proper platform for e-governance and place ourselves at a position where silos cease to exist in government and we function as a single institution and we answer the question, how do we simplify the lives of our people and make them more convenient? You will find that not only will all these other things we have to do that take away the rest of our day, not only will they fall away, but also the additional money we pay for services we don't need. 40 rand for photographs you don't need, an entire day away from work, and so on and so on and so forth. So digitized records will be a key enabler for e-governance. Fourthly, Home Affairs contributes to nation building and social cohesion in the manner we manage the citizenship of our country in the manner we manage immigration, identifying those who must join our nation as citizens who are getting naturalized permanent residents, those who are coming on temporary sojourn because they are refugees, they are to be hosted in our nation, how we integrate them in local communities, how we manage that entire process and, and contribute towards the, the, the definition and redefinition of South Africa as a dynamic and cosmopolitan society. We take all of these things for granted. And due to the legacy of apartheid, the democratic South Africa inherited an appalling, fragmented, and manual-based system of records management. Only the records of, South, of white South Africans were properly managed and filed as opposed to the records of persons of other races. And if this failure to keep proper records created a situation where there was no trace of the birth registration of many black South Africans, and thus their records in the National Population Register cannot be traced. The digitization of records, therefore, will enable Home Affairs to consolidate our single citizenship in which every South African's identity and status is recognized. Therefore, working together with State SA, we are enormously excited at how digitization will enable us to serve South Africans so much more efficiently and securely in the coming years. And I hope the successful completion of this project the capabilities at that facility where we were are, are far much higher 
than the volume of work that we are giving them. This project, you were saying to me, should be done in 187 days. 11.6 million records should be digitized. So you can imagine if we wanted to do all the 187 million, 186 million, we, we were going to do them so quickly. So that by the time we, 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 we complete them, the lives of our people would be far much more simpler. But we won't stop. I think the department is quite determined that the modernization of home affairs cannot stop. With the resources that we have, we are going to continue to soldier on, to modernize the department, digitize it, make South Africans' lives easier. And I think in the next few months, we should make further announcements that are going to excite our people, simplify their lives, make them forget the pain they once experienced at the hands of our department. But let me conclude by saying that all of this depends on our network suppliers providing us reliable network. My dream is to see a home affairs system that's operational 24-7. The pain our people experience these days when they go to our offices and are told the system is down, the network is off, we are offline, please come back another day, is a pain that we too, that I too feel as a minister. Because I don't want our people to, to take their time, come to our offices only to be told you cannot be saved. Not because we don't want to save you, but because our network suppliers are so flippant and indifferent and uncaring. Because it is not them who stand in front of angry and disappointed clients who must now, having taken an entire day off, go back to be told take another day off to come back another day. I would like to see our network suppliers doing a better job. We're doing everything that we can to ensure that our network suppliers can really live up to the money, the rents that we pay them. Because it's not as if they're doing us a favor with the services they're giving us. We pay for these services. But they don't care because it is not them who are at the call phase interacting with the clients. They are only sitting somewhere operating computers, providing us a network if and when it's available. It is a frustration for me too. It's a frustration for our people. It's a frustration I hope we can end very quickly. Thank you very much.